Okay, hello everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a mod showcase. Why? Because all the mod showcases I know are not English, and the ones that are English, I'm sorry, but they suck. They're just not good. So I decided I should do my own for all of you who have questions that are unanswered, just like me. There for a while when I started it was difficult, so because no one had anything on them. So I figured I'll go. So Nick Magalodice is by Azestraw, I think I pronounced that right, or known as the Architect in his Discord server. <coughs> so first off, we're going to start with these creative items. The Heart of Creation. What this does is it makes you immortal. That's literally all it does. It's very powerful. Uh, this, another creative item only. There's a bunch of quotes, and there's a narrator that speaks to you through certain events that happen, and after you accomplish certain goals. Uh, yep, okay. And I do recommend turning your volume down, because he is quite loud by default. Uh, Alright, this, the one box. This is a loot table check, basically. If you see in the bottom of my screen, chest and city treasure. Simple dungeon. Shift right click, it goes back the other way. We're going to do end city treasure. If you shift right click on the top of a chest, the top of one, there is your end city table of loot. And this is, this is extremely accurate. This, we'll get to this stuff later in just a second. All right. This will be your miscellaneous items. I'm going to go over every single one of these, even though you can probably read it in the book. Extra dimensional eye. Shift right click while standing at a certain location, and you can left click with it on a living creature to teleport it there. I don't think uh, it doesn't work a long dimension. And same look dimension. Okay. So if I do, you can do this some epic trolling with this, and you can also, it's easier to transport villagers and things. So summon, we'll do the warden. Because everyone knows that if you want to troll somebody, putting the warden in their base would suck. So I shift right clicked right over here. That's say let's where my friend's base is, okay? Warden underground, blah blah blah. There it is. Now it is in my friend's base. Quite the uh It's quite interesting, isn't that just how that works. I should not have summoned you, because now I'm not gonna be able to kill you, can I? Uh, give me three seconds. A potion of recall. And just for the record, I'll be going over how to craft all these potions at the end of the video. Potion of recall, pretty simple. I'm pretty sure this was a based off Terraria item. Turns you to your bed or respawn anchor location or to the center of the world if you don't have one. Pretty self explanatory It recalls you to your original position. Spawn position. Acts of Executioner, uh, actually I should go over crafting recipes too. Extra dimensional eye. Pretty simple. This one's a bit more, yeah, hefty price. 15% uh, beheading chance, though, so it's pretty good. It does 10 attack damage, 1 point attack at 6. Attack speed, it's pretty good. If you're looking for heads, that's probably your best chance. On Holy Grail. You better not be drinking from it. Gives you a bunch of bad effects. Don't believe me? There you have it. Moving on. Mending mixture. Uh, pretty useful item if you ask me. You can bind with any tool, weapon, or armor in a crafting grid to fully restore durability. It's quite explain it, self-explanatory. It's a mending mixture. Uh... Blank scroll. This can be used to make many of the various arcane scrolls in within Enigmatic Legacy. Uh, you can find these. That's pretty. It's pretty simple. And you can craft them. Same thing with the Holy Grail. You can craft it. I'm pretty sure you can also find this. The Recall Potion. Moving on. Most of this stuff you can find. So, Astral Dust found in the end has many crafting purposes uh you can also use it in brewing but we'll get into that later architects inkwell you can basically write lore for your items with a lore fragment very cool stuff um 
I mean, really, it's amazing. So I'll, I'll just give you a second to pause and read that if you really want to, but. Uh, Keystone of the Oblivion. This is basically an item eater. It's a trash can. Uh, while in inventory, right-clicking it while dragging another stack or while dragging the keystone over another stack will destroy that stack combined with any item in a crafting grid to let it automatically consume the item while in an inventory or with nothing to clear that list. While holding, press right-click to switch modes or shift right-click to activate or deactivate. In total absorption mode, keystone consumes all listed items within your inventory until none left. In last stack mode, it will always leave one stack of each type of item but will consume anything more than that. In excess absorption mode, it will only consume everything that you have no free space for in your inventory and only until it appears. Pretty interesting item. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it just means you don't have to have lava or fire on you to get rid of something. Hungering Tome of Knowledge. Ah, isn't this an interesting one? It gets rid of all enchant. You can basically com take any enchantments off any items and put it under the one book. So you can move it over to another item. This one is quite similar, but it does it with curses. It takes all curses off an item. Only those who bear the seven curses help power to obtain and use this item. We'll get into the seven curses here in a second. Need another clip. I just realized I forgot the recipe for these two books. Maybe I go over them a little later in the video, but regardless, I'm going to go ahead and record this. This one... Uh, the cursed one, where you take off curses, of my, uh, is crafted like this, with this tome, the Hungering Knowledge. Uh, this tome can be found through, uh, or not be found. Maybe it can be found, I don't know, but it can also be crafted like this, and I'm pretty sure I also... Okay. Uh, oh, 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 uh... Oh god, I lost a lot of time. That's okay. Soul Crystal. This will appear when you die and you have the ring on. The Ring of Seven Curses. You can right-click it to regain your health. Every time you die with the Ring of Seven Curses on, a piece of your health goes. You have to go back to where you died to reclaim it. Blah, blah, blah. We'll get into that later. Okay, Tattered Tome, Withered Tome, and Corrupted Tome. These three items give you knowledge points, which at the minute I'm pretty sure do nothing, but they also give you experience. One knowledge point, experience, 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 knowledge points. You can also use these as fuel for an achievement. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, Twisted Mirror. Only those who bear the seven curses can use this. Gaze into the mirror to return to your bed or respawn anchor or to the center of the overworld if you don't have one. Basically, the recall potion, but infinite uses for those who wear the seven curses. Art of the Guardian. Uh, while in the Guardians within 24 block radius, you are rendered neutral towards you and will target nearby monsters while on hotbar casting your sight upon the monster within 24 blocks from it causes this come temporarily enraged, gaining greater strength and switching target to other closest monster within 12 blocks from it. Other monsters within the radius will instantly prioritize attacking enraged monsters. Some monsters are immune to being enraged. This ability has a 10 second cooldown. Only those who bear the seven curses have power to obtain and use this item. It drops from the Guardian. Pretty sure the Elder Guardian has a chance to drop. I don't think you can craft it, no. Not appear so. Nefarious Essence. This drops from the Wither. Uh, it has many, many, many crafting recipes. Well, I say many, but it's got a few here. Uh, really, that's kind of it. You can you, you can craft the Nefarious Ingots, but the Nefarious Ingots have no use right now. I guess uh, if you're making a mod pack and you're using this and there's an item that you want to change the recipe or create a recipe for one that doesn't have a recipe, you could use this nefarious ingot. Forbidden fruit. This is a... Uh, any followers of Christ would know what this is. This is meant to be a fruit picked from the tree of good and... Uh, knowledge of good and evil. Uh, knowledge is the greatest gift. Yeah, sure. Uh, after consuming this fruit, you shall never experience hunger again, but any form of regeneration will have an 80% weaker effect. You can find this in the nether. I don't know if you can find it anywhere else, because I haven't found it anywhere else, but pretty sure you can find it in bastions and nether fortresses. That's the best place to look. Potion of Redemption. Reverses the effects of the forbidden fruit. Uh, alright. 
Guide to animal companionship. While in your inventory, your attacks can't deal damage to animals. Hoglins around you are rendered passive. Alteration of the second curse. We'll get into that later. What was that last part? Right click any entity, so whatever is considered tameable for curse altering effect. Okay. Uh, guide to feral hunt. While in your inventory, the damage your pets receive within 24 blocks is redirected upon you. So it basically makes your pets invincible and you all that more killable. But... You know, damage is reduced by 50 if you have the guide to animal companionship. Very, very good. Heart of the Earth can be found in dungeons on the overworld. I don't know about the nether, but uh, slightly tainted by a curse once present. It's referring to the one who wears the ring of seven curses. Uh, but you can use this to craft the next item, the Twisted Heart. Only those who bear the seven curses can craft it. Uh, it's used in many recipes, once again. Uh, Wayfinder of... We'll get into that in a second. A lot of this stuff we'll get to. In pretty much, ev well, everything. I've got everything covered in this. So, Unholy Stone. If you die in the nether, you in the middle in the middle of a sufficiently large lava lake. With the stone in your inventory, Ring of the Seven Curses will be permanently destroyed, along with one of your soul crystals. This cannot be undone. Only those who bear the Seven Curses have power to obtain this item. It's craftable. And I think you can probably also find it. I did not mean to reload my shaders. Yeah, it's craftable. Quite a hefty price, though. Pretty much an endgame item. Alright. <clears throat> Moving on. This can be crafted. It's an infinite bone meal. Pretty good. Uh, effective on cactuses, coarse plants, nether wart, sugarcane, and vines. Pretty amazing. I did not go over the recipe. Pretty simple. It's just basically everything. Potion of Twisted Mercy. Only those who bear the seven curses can hold power to obtain and use this item. Teleport you to the location of your last demise on the cost of leaving you on the edge of death. It's exactly how it sounds. Twisted Mercy. Bulwark of Blazing Pride. Uh, extinguishes you when on fire. Can block attacks immediately after being raised. Can block piercing enchanted arrows. Cannot be disabled by weapons normally effective against shields. Burns attackers when blocking melee damage. Successful blocks grant increasing blazing might effect, but any damage received takes it away. Enemy attacks from behind you deal 50% more damage. Only those who bear the seven curses hold power to obtain and use this item. I actually don't know what the blazing might effect is, but I guess we'll find out. At us enigmatic blazing strength 10 seconds we'll do one uh, it probably catches things on fire zombie well that was not a good pick was it spider I have no idea what blazing might does I'm <laughs> I'm sorry uh, we can probably find it in here. What item was that? This was Bulwark of Blazing Pride. It would probably be under tools. Uh, forge conventional tagging. Retaliate. If I only believe powerful defensive shield attacker, you might. Another thing, you know, he is it early as immensely restore bear with yourself. It comes in a vision skiller. I'm not exactly sure. Um, anyway, okay, well, anyway, moving on. I apologize that I do not know what Blazing Might is. That is the only thing I probably don't know in this mod, to be honest with you. Heart of the Cosmos. Uh, really has no use, but it's used... I say no use. No use by itself, but it's used in a lot of crafting recipes. So, as an item by itself, it does nothing. But it crafts many... Not many, but a few items. Pretty powerful items, too. We'll get into those in a second. Heart of the Abyss. Uh, this, along with this, is craftable. Sorry, forgot. Uh, 
Heart of the Abyss is not craftable, but if you have spent 99.5% of your time in the world suffering the seven curses, so if you have the ring on, this will drop from the Ender Dragon when you kill it. It will not land on the ground, no, it floats in the air where it dies. So be on the lookout for that when you kill it and you have the ring on. It's used in many recipes later on. Not many, but again, very powerful item. This can only be found if you have the ring on. That is the only way this will spawn in a loot table. Consume to obtain plus one ring slot permanently. Gives you an extra slot. Pretty amazing. The Ender Slayer. Uh, it's crafted with... Well, you have to kill the winner to craft it, so it's not easy, but... All right. Plus 150% damage against Dwellers of the End, 600 plus 600% knockback against Dwellers of the End. In the end, fully charged attacks deal colossal damage to Endermen, and all drops from their, them are transformed into experience. Temporarily disables teleportation abilities of Shulkers and Endermen. Temporarily disables active ability of the Eye of Nebula. Not oh, I did not know it did that. I didn't remember. So basically, this is a great sword for attacking players. If you want to disable their abilities. Um, yeah, only those who bear the seven curses held power to obtain this item. I would hope only those people do. Teleportata. Um, behold the infinite delicacy of the stars. Once again, if you are a believer in Christ, I think this is, would be a reference to manna, the food of the angels. If you know anything about different religions or cultures or, or even if you care. Uh, Wayfinder of the Dam points to the location of the nearest soul crystal. So basically, if you die and you have the seven curses on, as I said, your heart will be torn from your soul and it will be in your death location. So you have to go back and find it. I can demonstrate this by... Kill. And if I hold this... As you can see, it points to my crystal. Crafting recipe. Uh, kind of expensive. I would say it's an in-game item considering it uses netherite, but... You know. Uh, this is a wonderful item. I use this a lot when I... If I can actually get to it. Um, this is basically an elytra... That has the ability to propel you forward without fireworks. But at the cost of damaging it heavily, basically. Um, pretty expensive. Ethereum is like top-notch stuff. So, it's pretty hard to get. This is not going to be an easy item to obtain. I might as well show it off on my back. For any of you wondering how it looks on the player. And as you can see... When I press space, it instantly propels me, no matter what direction, and if I let go. I recommend tapping it. Do not hold it. It will drain the durability very fast. So, very good item. Alright, Potion of Icker. Known uh, as the Blood of the Gods. Pure gold. Uh, gives you plus one charm slot permanently. Dimensional Anchor. Works in all dimensions. It's a basically uh, a respawn anchor, but it works in all dimensions. Has a 35% chance not to spend charge upon respawn. Very, very good. Amazing. Uh, the Eternal Cake. It's a cake that never runs out. It will regen over time. Pretty expensive. Uh, it's up there. I mean, it's got end stuff involved in it, so yeah. These are all decoration blocks. Crafting them. I mean, it's pretty simple. I don't personally ever use these. I think it's cool that they have them. I don't really understand why they have them. Like, I know that they're in Enigmatic Legacy, but why? I don't see the real purpose behind them and how they fit in. But I guess it is a cool item. Okay, finally, we're going to move on to some special stuff. 
These are all forms of what is known as the unwitnessed amulet, which you can find right here. And you spawn with an unwitnessed amulet. But once you touch it, it turns into one of these, and your name is permanently engraved on it. And I'm pretty sure this is the only way to get these. You cannot find these otherwise. I'm pretty sure. So be very careful because this is used to craft something very powerful. They all have their special little effects. I might as well show them. This one. 25% mining speed. 25% mining speed. 10% lifesteal. 25% swimming speed. Plus negative 25 gravity. So basically percent gravity. It's a uh, jump boost, basically. Plus 1.5 attack damage. Pretty good, considering the da uh, the cursed ring halves your damage. 1.15%, uh, sorry, sprinting speed. Plus 15% uh, deflect arrows and other projectiles, I presume. So that's very good. Okay, let's get on to these. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of these can be found or crafted. Yeah, they can be crafted. Uh, I usually don't go ahead and craft these. I usually wait to find them. Uh, plus one charm slot. That is very good to know. You receive a greater amount of power of enchantments when using enchanting table. Enchanting has enchants to produce both curses and treasure enchants. You do not require lapis lazuli to enchant. Only those who bear the seven curses held power to obtain and use this item. But the curses, if you're wearing the seven curses ring, remember, you can get rid of the curses. So overall, this is probably a good item to have. Okay. Extrapolated mega sponge. It instantly absorbs water in a small radius around you when you enter it. Pretty self-explanatory. It's a sponge. Emblem of Monster Slayer. Or Monster Slayer. Plus 25% damage against undead creatures. Plus 10% damage against other aggressive creatures. Plus one looting level. Slaying monsters drop, drop double as much experience. And remember, if you have the ring on, you already, by default, have plus 400 experience drop. So that would double to plus 800. Well, no, it wouldn't double to 800%. It would be 400% of the normal drop, and then that normal drop, 400% of it doubled. There you go. Uh, okay. Plus 30% mining speed, plus 1 fortune level. While you are underground, applies night vision effect on you. This feature can be disabled by pressing right click when holding charm. Night vision enabled. Two plus 2.15 reach distance. Very wonderful. Emblem of Bloodstained Valor. Plus 1% attack damage, plus 1% attack speed, plus 0 0.5 attack or movement speed, plus 0 0.5. 0, I can't talk. 0.5% damage resistance. These traits are multiplied by how many percents of your health pool you're currently missing. So basically less health you have the more powerful you become pretty good stuff here uh, one of these I left over here to the side because this one's special charming insignia I have entered two gold emerald prismarine name tag now what makes this one special replaces your name tag if renamed an anvil and that is extremely if you have you can trick people into thinking you're someone else. Allows you to see your own name tag. Shift right click when holding to toggle this. Self visible name tags. Uh, plus one charm slots when having this. So you get to change your name. And you get to have another charm slot. So. I can be anybody I want. Who would you want to be? You can literally name yourself anything. I want to be Notch. I can be Notch. Boom. And other players will see this. There is a counteraction or a way to counteract this though. Uh, if you do not, how do I explain this? We'll get to this in a second. There is something that allows you to see true name tags, even if someone is wearing this. So moving up, this is the item I was talking about. We'll get to those in a second. This is the dormant eye. Right now it does nothing. If you right click to enable it, it gives you plus one charm slots and plus three reach distance. Distance. Uh, really, it reveals true names of players bearing charming insignia as well. So you got that. But what really, there's really no purpose to this uh, this item other than the fact that we're pretty sure it's the narrator, the guy who simply roamed these lands before you did many years ago. That's kind of the lore behind it. But anyway, it's a very good item 
for distance and building and pretty much everything like that. Uh, all right, moving on. That's why I put on known here because we're not quite sure what this comes from and why it exists. Aimlet of Assumption and the Testament of Contempt. Alrighty, these are very powerful items, and I have to. I, you, there's you buy. You cannot get these recipes unless you haven't. Let me explain this. Uh, these tomes, these three right here. When you right click on them, you're wondering what that knowledge is. That knowledge, basically, is giving you knowledge of this book. You find you get more and more knowledge the more and more of those tomes that you use. And if you're lucky, you can get the recipes of these two items. If we go under, I'm pretty sure it'd be accessories. No, uh, artifacts. Here we go. Amulet of Ascension. Yes, Ascension. Uh, here's a recipe. This does not have to be specifically enigmat or enigmatic. Sorry, it can be any of these. I've checked. I've already tried. Does work with all of them. Uh, Test and contempt. You have to craft this before you can craft this. This is for those, of course, who have uh, seven curses. And I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be able to wear these items together. Because, like, if I put this one, if I put this one on, I can't put it on because I don't have enough time. But if I put this one on. There's a certain order where you can put them both on, but if you put them on the other way around, it won't let you put both of them on. I don't know if that's a bug or what, but you can get the abilities of both. So, I I use that, but I don't know if you're meant to be able to put both of them on or not. It's still unclear to me, but moving on. Rings. Uh, yeah, we went all over, over all those. Um, the rings... One of these rings is uncraftable. It's the Ring of Seven Curses. You spawn with this. Now we're going to go finally go over this ring. Seven curses will befall whoever bears it. You receive double damage from any source. Neutral creatures are aggress aggressive towards you. Armor is 30% less effective. Monsters receive 50% less damage from you. When on fire, you burn forever. Unless you have something to extinguish it. Every death tears your soul apart, which is what I was talking about with the soul crystals earlier. You suffer from incurable insomnia. Now, that doesn't sound that bad as it is. It means you can't sleep. But then you start thinking about phantoms, and you're like, well, even that's not that bad because I still have a few days before the phantoms come. That is not true at all. The phantoms instantly, on the first night, will come after you, regardless how many nights you haven't slept. Which, I he clearly did that on purpose. Uh, seven blessings will reward those who withstand. Plus one looting level, plus one fortune level, plus 400% experience drop, plus 10 enchanting power and enchanting table. Unique drops from some creatures functionality of Ring of Ender you can create and use unique relics. Which are the ones that say only those who bear the seven curses can craft this item. That's basically what all that means. You can craft unique relics if you use this. This one can only be worn if you have, you know, the Ring of Seven Curses. Iron Golems, Endermen, Zombified Piglins, and piglins will not spawn in your proximity. So if you go to the end wearing this ring, there will not be a single enderman. I'm serious. Now, of course, you have to go there before you can even get this because you have to craft the heart, or you have to get the heart of the abyss. So, uh, the other rings, magnetic ring. It's an iron ring, which you can craft like this. I can go back here. Uh, what does it do? Well, it attracts items with an eight block radius. This can be disabled by holding shift. This location ring instantly collects any dropped items within a 16 block radius of you. This can be disabled by holding shift. Uh, four lapis, magnetic ring, eye of ender, three gold. <clears throat> ring of ender, which if you have the cursed ring on, as you can see, I have access to that basically already. So there's no point to craft this if you're wearing the ring of seven curses. Ring of ender. Ender chest, two gold, uh, ingots and nuggets, one ender pearl, iron ring. And it just basically gives you access to an ender chest at all times. Pretty cool. Current keybind I. You can change that in settings. Iron ring. Literally just plus one armor. This one renders piglins neutral when worn. Now see the problem with this. Is why does it have a cross mark through it? That's because you have the ring of seven curses on. Mobs that 
are normally neutral are all aggressive toward you. So it just counteracts this ring completely. This ring's useless. If you're wearing the ring of seven purses. Uh, all right. I think I've gone over all of them. Yeah, we have. Okay. Oh, yeah. Gold. Same recipe for iron, but with the iron ring in the middle. Uh, that is all of them. Okay. <clears throat> Man, my voice. I need water. I should have thought about that. We'll get to this in a second, because that is very special. Okay. Scroll of Ageless Wisdom. It can store a limitless amount of experience. Press shift right click while holding it to toggle it active. Press right click to switch modes. You can also use related keybinds in absorption mode. It consume experience while carried in scroll slot. And when it says consume, it does not mean get rid of. It means it's stored within this. In extraction mode, this behavior is reversed and the scroll transfers all stored experience back to you. While active, collects experience orbs within a 16 block radius. That's pretty good. Uh, to activate in the first place, as it says, you have to shift right click and now it will work. Scroll. Uh, did I go over crafting recipe? I don't think I did. Scroll of Ageless Wisdom. Uh, pretty simple crafting recipe. I think the hardest thing here is the bottle of enchantings. Probably the weirdest, hardest part to get. They're not common unless you trade with a villager. Scroll of Postmortal Recall. When you die, returns your items to your bed and respawn anchor location or the center of the overworld. If you don't have one, but it's self-remaining of at the location of your death. Uh, Potion Recall. Nebula. That's probably the hardest thing to get here. This by default, by the way, the current keybind is for me is my mouse button. By, by, by default, it's K. I should just say that. Um, pretty cool item. Gift of the Heaven provides you an ability to fly within the range of an active beacon at the cost of slowly consuming your experience. Compensates mining speed penalty when flying. Pretty good. Uh, this is an end game item for sure. Grace of the Creator. It's just a better gift of the Heaven. Yeah. Uh, provides you an ability to freely fly at the cost of quickly consuming your experience. Experience consumption is completely negated within the range of a beacon. So you can fly anywhere, but it consumes... Your experience, unless you're in the range of a beacon. Common Saints Mining Speed penalty while flying. Same thing here. Scroll of a Thousand Curses. Okay. Did I go over the crafting recipe for this? I didn't. But it's this Gift of the Heavens surrounded by more and more overpowered stuff. We'll get to the Ethereum stuff later. Uh, scroll of a Thousand Curses. Darkest Scroll. Uh, this can be found in Bastions. But other than that, there's no crafting recipe. And by itself, you can wear it, but it does nothing, to the best of my knowledge. Two redstone, any enchanting book, probably even a curse book, maybe, I don't know. Feather, phantom membranes, ink sack, twisted mercy. What does this do exactly? Well, a plus four attack, percent attack mining speed, plus seven percent mining speed. Uh, sorry, plus four percent attack damage, plus seven percent mining speed, plus four percent health regeneration. These traits are multiplied by total amount of curses that... All items of your inventory have equipped. So, basic, I think it's of all in your inventory. Or maybe it's specific to a very specific, the items that you're using. So, let's say I have a sword. And it's cur it has got three different curses on it. Curse of, curse of Banishing. And it's got two other curses from the mod. En Enigmatic Legacy. Curse of Sorrow. Curse of Eternal Binding. Blah, blah, blah. Let's say it's got multiple. It multiplies that. Uh, it multiplies the number or the percents by the number of curses. <clears throat> that makes, I hope that made sense. I probably didn't explain it very well, but that's because I'm stuttering and I'm having trouble speaking because I'm speaking a lot. My mouth getting dry, so I'm making mistakes. I'm stuttering, blah, blah, blah. You don't care. Anyway. <clears throat> Pact of Infinite Adverse. 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 I think that's a Vars. A Varus. I can't read. This is why I have glasses. Anyway, I should probably put those on. Probably help. That is a Varus. I'm stupid. I apologize. 
<clears throat> anyway, plus one fortune level. Renders piglins neutral towards you, despite the second curse. So it overrides the second curse of all natural mo or, uh, naturally... What's the word? Oh my god, my brain is actually stupid. Uh, neutral creatures. All naturally neutral creatures are aggressive towards you. That just basically overrides with piglins. They're completely neutral. Uh, barding with them is around 100% more beneficial. Provides 15% chance of one emerald dropping from any slain mob. Uh, villager trades have 35% discount. I think that's everything. And you craft it with the darkest scroll. Some extra glamour here and there. Pretty easy. Again, this is found in Bastions. Now let's go to the very special recipe one. This, now, this is a special recipe because you can find it in the book. But what makes this extremely special is the key ingredient isn't even in Minecraft. It's in his Discord server. You need a role called Devoted Believer. Otherwise, you cannot use this item. Literally useless. I know the effects, you, you can't read any of the descriptions. You can if you go in the game files. I went ahead and checked, but he probably doesn't want you doing that. So I'm not going to spoil the effects for you. But anyway... Very powerful item. I'm pretty sure the only way to get it is by having that roll. Other than that, I have not tried to cheese it and cheat it, and I have not tried. Uh, there's probably a way to do it, I imagine. I'd have to do some more research. But you can't use this item. There's literally no way. Uh, unless you have that roll. You can craft it, but you can't craft it unless you have that roll. It's actually impossible. I believe it's under accessories. Here it is. The architect's favor. Uh, you can get to his Discord server by here. Literally this link. Anyway. We're going to move on from that. <clears throat> okay. Spellstones. There's quite a few of them here. Uh, this is going to be a long video. All right. Blazing Core. Active ability absent. I don't think it has an active ability. I think that's what that means. There's none given. Passive abilities. Immunity of fire. Temporary immunity. Lava burns those who attack you in melee. Heavily improved a bit. <sighs> Heavily improved visibility in lava. Any status effects apply to you tick down twice as fast except Molten Core. Molten Heart, sorry. Molten Heart lasts twice as long. You are vulnerable to underwater creatures. Wonderful. I'm pretty sure this is not craftable. No, it is not. You can only get it by... Finding it in the nether. Speaking of crafting, you're probably wondering, well, I should go back to this for a second. The fact that I even got this, I use commands to get it, if you're curious. Because I just said that you can't craft it unless you have the rank, and I don't have the roll, so. Sorry, uh, I had to go back to that because I'm an idiot and I forgot. Angel's Blessing cannot also be crafted. You find this in the end. I don't know if it can be found other places. Same thing here. It can be found in the nether. I don't know if it can be found other places. Considering it's a blazing core, I would say not. Uh, Angel's Blessing. Actively accelerates you in the direction of your sight. Kind of like the majestic Elytra did earlier. Cool down two seconds. That's actually very wonderful. It's very easy. Very very fast cooldown. Immunity to fall and collision damage. 50% damage to deflect incoming projectile. Your own projectiles are greatly accelerated. Actability can be triggered by pressing jump key while in midair. So it's exactly like the Elytra. In fact, you actually use this to craft that Elytra. So, there you have that. Uh, this can be found in the end. Don't know if it can be found other places, but this is the I found it in the end itself. So, active ability teleports you behind the creature you are looking at. Cool down three seconds. Passive abilities, 40% magic damage increase, 65% magic damage resistance, 15% chance to teleport away from any attack. Oh, okay, there's a lot of reading here in my... <laughs> I need water. Uh, after using an active ability, your next dam or your next attack is empowered and deals plus 150% damage. Immunity to damage from using Ender Pearls when in water, you are vulnerable. You are vulnerable to any damage. Just kind of like an Enderman would be, and kind of like another creature would be. You are both. These both make you vulnerable to water creatures. I will be right back. I need water. I'm 
Okay, much, much better. All right. Oh, my throat. Still dry, but at least I got some water. All right. Will of the Ocean. Uh, this can be found in ocean monuments, I presume. Or it can also be found in dungeons, I think. Anyway, uh, it starts thunderstorms at great cost of experience. Now that I think about it, I don't think you can find this in an ocean monument because I don't know if they're chests in ocean monuments. I haven't played Minecraft in quite some time, so you have to give me a break there. <clears throat> I usually don't go searching for ocean monuments. Uh, anyway, so probably just in a dungeon. So continuing on, cooldown is 30 seconds. Passability is 40% damage resistance against underwater creatures. You no longer need air to breathe underwater. Provides night vision uh, effect when in water. Provides effects on aqua infinity enchantment. Negates gravity when underwater. Greatly increased swimming speed. So basically, you can you don't sink. You can choose whether to go up or down. Greatly increased swimming speed. You are vulnerable to fire damage. Makes sense. Uh, Enchantress Pearl. I think... I feel like I've already been over this, but... No, we probably haven't. Anyway. Enchantress Pearl. It's a charm. Okay. We have been over this. I apologize. Uh, it is a charm. It should not be here. Uh, ignore that. This should be in a five formation. I apologize. Anyway. Pearl of the Void. I'm pretty sure you can find this in the end. Uh, has no active ability. Passive abilities. You no longer need air to breathe. Immune to any status effects. Your attacks inflict withering. Any creatures nearby, if they are exposed to darkness, receive massive damage and heavy debuffs. Sky flaps are affected regardless of light level. 35% chance that otherwise lethal damage won't kill you. What is a sky flap? Am I crazy? Sky flaps are affected regardless of light level. Okay. I, I don't know what a sky flap is. Maybe I'm crazy, but... Maybe I do know what it is, and he's calling it something else, and I'm just not used to hearing it called that. Heart of Creation, we've already been over. Uh, makes you a god, basically. A special recipe. This basically has the abilities of every single one of them. Teleports you to a random location in 1-3 of main dimensions. Cooldown 100... Okay, I should, I should reread that. Teleports you to a random location in one of the three main dimensions. Cooldown 120 seconds. Passive abilities, plus 35%... Printing speed, plus 100% swimming speed, plus 60% mining speed, plus 40% attack speed, plus 1 fortune level, plus 1 luck. Any attacks that deal above 150 damage are completely negated uh, to you. They negate against you, I should say that. Your attacks still can do above 150 damage, if you find a way to even do above 150 damage. 35% uh, chance to deflect an incoming attack or projectile. When attacked in melee, it applies random debuff to attacker. Whenever you slay any creature, you receive a random buff. You need no air to breathe. Immunity to negative stat effects. Or immunity to negative status effects, yeah. Immunity to pressure, fall, collision, pricking, teleportation, fire, and lava damage. When you have more than one health, you survive any lethal damage with one health remaining. If you have one health or less, attempts to trigger active ability to prevent lethal damage, restores your health to 30% and applies powerful buffs if successful. So what that means is it'll teleport you to a random dimension if you're about to die. So it saves you. Uh, it doesn't do it every time, but most of the time it will. And, and keep in mind, it's only one of the three main dimensions. So if you have a modded dimension, it's probably not gonna teleport you there. Uh, but the recipe, the recipe is Heart of the Golem, two Heart of the Cosmos, Blazing Core, Nebula, Eye of the Nebula, Pearl of the Void, Will of the Ocean, Angel's Blessing, and Obsidian. Okay. So it's basically all spell stones combined into one. There's only five in total. What am I missing? Is Heart of the Golem a charm? 
Oh my god, I clicked on the wrong one. Now I know why that thing was there. Uh, that's why Enchantress Pearl was here. I knew there were six, and I couldn't remember what the sixth one was. It's Heart of the Golem. I apologize. Uh, you can pretty much find this in... Uh... Okay. You can uh, find this pretty much anywhere in the overworld, I'm pretty sure. You're probably likely to find it in a village would be my guess, but I don't know. I don't remember. Passive abilities, uh, plus 4 armor points if nothing is equipped in armor slots. Instead, gain plus 16 armor points, plus 4 armor toughness, and plus 40% explosion damage resistance. 25% melee damage resistance, 100% knockback resistance, immunity to pressure, and pricking damage. You are vulnerable to magic damage. Whew. Man, that is a lot that I just went over. Okay, finally, Ethereum. Anything to do with Ethereum will be right here. Okay, drink of water. I would have had this on armor stand to display, but if you have a full set of it on, it literally is invisible. And it has a set buff if you have everything on. When your health drops below 40%, it generates powerful shield that reflects most projectiles, provides 50% damage resistance, and knocks back any creatures that attack you. Any creatures that attack you. That should be. Anyway, this is better than netherite. I should mention that. It is absolutely better than netherite. Uh, and I'll talk about how to craft it in a second. Well, it's Ethereum, obviously, for all of it. But, uh, okay. Ethereum tools, they all have special little buffs that we're going to go over. And you craft them with... Uh, ender rods, diamonds, and ethereum. Ender rods, which you can find over here, are crafted by ender pearls, two blaze rods, and two astral dust. I'll get into everything else in a second. So, the ethereum broadsword, press right click while holding it, and it will throw you in a direction opposite to your sight. This ability has two per second cooldown, press shift right click to suppress it. So, basically, right click throws you back. If I shift right click and I press right click, now nothing happens. Shift right click, throws you back. And something else I don't think it mentions, if you shift right click, never mind. I was about, never mind. Uh, so that's the sword. Done, done and done. Pickaxe, no diamonds in this one. Two ender rods, three ethereum, get yourself an ethereal pickaxe. With most of the tools you're going to find, it mines in a 3x3 three three area, and it mines... Well, not a 3x3x3, three by three by three, but a 3x3x1. Three three so, uh, same thing here. If you shift right click, it suppresses it. But, keeping that in mind, now that I've shift right click and it only mines one, if I shift while I have the ability suppressed, it does not do anything. I've been lied to. Never mind. I, I just told myself something that's not true. Ignore that. Same thing with this on leaves and logs. The axe is the same way. Shovel, same thing with dirt. Scythe, uh, does a, it mines blocks 3x3 three three area. It also uh, tills soil in a 3x3 three three area. Now, the only thing I will say that I don't like about this hoe is that normal hoes can break hay bales faster. This one does not. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I mean, maybe they fix it, but it does. from my testing, it does not. And I'll get a netherite hoe out just to compare. Yeah, it, it it's like punching it with your fist. But the netherite hoe is much faster. Punching it with my fist, punching it with the scythe. It's very disappointing. I hope he fixes that. I should probably say something about it in the suggestions tab. Uh, but, moving on. Should probably actually go over the recipes for the re these ones too, but I'm pretty sure it's exactly how you would think they'd be crafted. Well, the war axe isn't. You'd probably think there's one up here too, but no. That's how you make your ethereal war axe. Ethereum scythe, same thing. Ethereum shovel, it's all the same. Uh, the sword is the only one that requires diamonds. Moving on to ethereum ore and how to get it. So Ethereum Ore can be found in the end. 
and uh, I should mention, not by mining for it, but by finding it in loot. Like, uh, finding it as loot in chests in the end cities. That's the only way to get it. Ethereum scrap. Uh, there is, I actually don't know how to get this. I think he plans to make it mineable soon, and that'll, that's why. But there is, to the best of my knowledge, you cannot use this to craft anything. There's no uses for it. Ethereum you can get, you get by smelting this, obviously. It can be used in a blast furnace as well. It can be used to smelt. Crafting, you can craft it into a block, or you get nuggets. Nuggets are crafted by this, obviously. I don't think the nuggets have a use. No, they don't. So I don't know why they exist, but you know, it is what it is. Ender rod, we already went over. Uh, I think the only uses is for tool handles, yes. Uh, and finally, the last thing of the Ethereum is this, the Astral Breaker. It's all the Ethereum tools combined. Breaks blocks in 3x3 three three area. Hold shift to suppress this effect. Effective against most blocks. Most. Keep that in mind. Does 10 attack damage. This is like an everything tool. Literally, that's exactly what it is. Uh, if I was in a normal world, I'd show you the axe, the shovel, the scythe, and, but I'm not, so I can't really show that off. The books of power and knowledge. That's not actually what they're called, but I figured that was a good around name for them. So the acknowledgement, the twist, and the infinitum. I'm pretty sure you can use the, yeah, you can use the twist as the acknowledgement. You you're supposed to be able to use the infinitum too. But for whatever reason, I can't right now. So. The twist. Alteration of the fourth curse always deals its full damage. Plus 300% attack damage against bosses and players. Plus 300% knockback. Only those who bear the seven curses can help power to obtain this item. And use it. When in main hand, nine. When in main hand, nine M attack damage, 2.2 attack speed. This one's even better. I know it's not plus 300%. But, plus 200% on 16 is much better than plus 300% on 9. Alteration of the 4th Curse, once again, always deals its full damage. Plus 200% attack damage against players and bosses. Plus 200% knockback. Plus 10% life spiel. steal. Can bear most sword enchantments. Each attack inflicts horrific debuffs. When held, provides 85% chance that otherwise lethal damage won't kill you. This sacrifice necessary to acquire this item is immense you have to have spent 99.5 percent of your time in the world suffering from the seven curses and if you don't do that and you try to use this you get those horrible debuffs debuffs inflicted back on you okay finally uh we'll go over this in a second other the so never mind we'll just we'll just go over this now uh molten heart i actually don't remember what this is supposed to do i remember reading a suggestion about it I think it's a, hold on, potions, molten heart, this one serves as improved vision, version of fire resistance potion, should find yourself willing to invent, invest less common ingredients in order to obtain greater effect, besides granting you a complete immunity to fire and lava, it extinguishes in you when you are on fire, and improves your sense of surroundings and molten magnetic currents to noticeable extent, so you can see better under lava. It's just a better fire resist potion. Ultimately, you should make the experience of stewing in lava oceans of the nether considerably more enjoyable. Potions of haste also do exist in this. Uh, just nether uh, awkward potion, which you get by do putting netherite, or not netherite, nether wart on it first, then nether quartz. You get a haste potion. Uh, potion of recall, you can craft by an eye of ender on an awkward potion once again. So nether wart, eye of ender. Potion of Twisted Mercy. Twisted Heart. That is very, very expensive. And it's on a Potion of Recall. Which you get from putting an Eye of Ender on an Awkward Potion, which you get from Nether Wars. So, quite the recipe. Uh, advanced Potions. Astral Dust. Once you, if, if you know how to use Glowstone and Redstone on a Potion to extend it and make it better. So, Glowstone increases it to Jump Boost too. And, oh wait, you can put this on a normal potion or jump boost 2. Jump boost 2, potion of leaving, ultimate potion. What makes this an ultimate potion is it's, not only does it extend, so jump boost 8 minutes is jump boost that's been affected by redstone. It makes the time, time much longer. Jump boost 2 is when you put glowstone on normal jump boost and it increases the, the effect. 
So this is the best of both worlds. You get the better effect and the longer time limit. That's what an ultimate potion is. It's astral dust on whatever potion. You could do glowstone or you could do a redstone affected one. So, very good stuff. Uh, to show how it looks under lava normally, this is how Molten Vision looks. And when I leave the lava, and if I was in Soraya, I'd still be burning. Look at that. I read originally the suggestion was supposed to make it so you could swim in it like it was water. You know how you actually swim in water, the horizontal swimming animation and everything? That was what it was supposed to do. That's what the recommendation was. It did not appear to come out that way, though. It's still a good potion, though. And I will say right now, if you want to unlock everything in the book, so if there's something I didn't cover and you want to read it for yourself, do slash advancement grant at S everything, and you will get every single achievement in the game. Now, it's going to play the advancement sound. It's going to play the sound of you getting epic achievements for like quite some time, so I recommend giving yourself that, or granting yourself every advancement, leaving the world, rejoining it, and then you can have access to everything in the book. So, for whatever reason, if there's something you still have questions about, read the book. Really, the best, it's all knowledge. Seriously, it's a great tool. It's better than most wikis are. And there's not many wikis on this mod, so that's another reason I decided to do this. Uh, effect clear. I really hope that you learn something today. I learned something. I learned that I should get water before I ever do this ever again. Because my throat is very dry. I also learned that signs and chests don't render from a certain distance away. Uh, something else. I recently made a suggestion in this guy's server for a certain item. And I want everyone's opinion on it. I, w I wanted to add an arcane scroll. See, you've got all these, and I wanted to add one called Scroll of Phantasmal Phasing. Allows the player to walk through blocks that are transparent. Of course, when I say transparent, I'm referring to the Minecraft tag property that some blocks have. If you want to check if something's transparent, you can basically place a block over a chest, and if the chest can still open, then this block is considered transparent. Bowstone is a good example of that. Glass, leaves, stairs, slabs... And I go on to say this would mean the player can walk through blocks such as glass or leaves. There would probably have to be some exception to this rule, such as stairs, slabs, and etc. So, yeah. I want your opinions on that in the comments if you actually think that's a good idea or no. And if you think it's a good idea, you can go to his server and you can look, and you can look at it for yourself. If you want to make your own suggestions to the mod that are not crap and they're balanced and they're half decent, then you can go to his mod page and you can do it there too. Or his Discord server. I don't... Uh, I'll try and I'll, I'll make an invite for it in the description along with a page to the mod so you can download it along with his GitHub wiki. So I'm pretty sure you should have everything you need. Hopefully, uh, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this monstrosity of a video. <clears throat> anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. Okay, because I am literally brain dead, I forgot to go over achievements. <clears throat> so, Enigmatic Legacy, Remains of the Former Times. I'm pretty sure this is when you equip the, or equip the unwitness amulet that you get, whatever one that may be. <clears throat> Magnificent, or Magnificence. Uh, find or create a magnetic ring, find or create a dislocation ring, not so ethereal, smelt the ethereal, ing ethereum ingot, uh, ethereum ore is what it's supposed to say into an ingot, but, uh, craft any tool out of ethereum, the ultimate shield, create a full set of armor made of ethereum, Pro discover the ast astral dust, I can't talk, uh, perform or, pre okay, this just basically means get the role devoted believer in a server, <coughs> that's pretty much it. I don't know because I've never gotten the achievement legitly other than through command, so I really can't tell you how, but I'm pretty sure that that's what that says anyway. I assume it's getting the uh, roll and then crafting it, but something like that. Uh, Master of the Brewing Sand, brew your first ultimate potion. Lore Rider, obtain the, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. the Architect's Inkwell. Uh, darkness lies ahead, equip the rings of... 
Equip the ring and embrace the seven curses. Uh, slay the Elder Guardian and claim the heart of the... Uh, heart of the Guardian. Slay the Inner Dragon and claim the heart of the Abyss. Acquire the Infinite and become the Herald of the Abyss. Forge the Burden of Dislocation... Desolocation, sorry, and bear it. And find the Celestial Fruit among treasures of the then city and consume it. Uh, find Bulwark of the Blazing Pride and the Ultimate Tool of Defense. I'm pretty sure... That you can... Okay, forge, never mind. Uh, create the Twisted Heart, create the Twisted Mirror, uh, make the Fateful Twist. Pretty simple. Uh, obtain your first Arcane Scroll, find a create Gift of the Heaven, obtain Grace of the Creator. How dare you try and range Tulma's, or try and use Ancient Tulma's Furnace Field, pr Primordial Sin, Primordial Sin. Uh, consume the Forbidden Fruit and rid yourself of the Curse of Hunger. Elemental Might, discover your first... Spell stone, stone grimoire. Collect every unique spell stone. Would there have been a way to combine them all? Which is this? This could be you could earn my mortality. That's using that special recipe in the book to create this cube. Uh, claim the pearl of the void. Who lives at the bottom? Finder create an extrapolated mega sponge. Fear some vengeance, but had an enemy using ex acts of executioner. Finder create mending mixture. Breathe potion of recall. Drink from the unholy grail and get the debuffs. Blah blah blah. This one you have to uh, basically harness the power, and that basically means to get good effects from the unholy or uh, unholy grail. To do that, you have to consume the forbidden fruit and then drink it, and then you get all these buffs from it. I think that's everything. I had to go over this quick because I missed these and I'm sorry. Uh, bye.